Hello, hello. Welcome, Facebook world. Welcome. We are here, Carrie and Patty, and we are here with Studio R12 Stencils to have a little fun on this yeah, Tuesday it's be afternoon. So much fun. We have a great we're, lesson for you. We're going to start with a drink because that's how we do. What in is our, in your tumbler? That's what we want to hear about. Yes, and we have a ton of Studio R12 tumblers on our website. They're really wonderful. They are. So we are waiting for people to jump on. Mm -hmm. We are making sure our audio is good. All the things are good. Let's talk real quick. I'm going to hand this over to Miss Patty. Hello. And we're going to remind you to head over to our YouTube channel and make sure that you subscribe and do the ringing of the bell so that you can be notified anytime we add new content to our YouTube channel. This was the video that we released on Saturday. Guys, this project has been super duper popular. Very popular. Yeah, and in, in this video, um, so we changed our format on the lives on Facebook so that we can be live on Facebook and do the interaction with you guys and answer your questions and do all of that. And then the videos that we're putting straight to YouTube are just a lesson on how to finish a project or how to do a technique. So it cleans it up a little bit, gets rid of the chitter chatter and stuff like that in there and makes it much easier to follow along. And I think one thing to um, note, we had some questions this week about the little bar underneath our videos. Yes. That is a timestamp and we go through and timestamp um, the background technique, the drop shadow technique. And you can go and drop, move your cursor across it and just go to the lesson that you want. And that's super handy. I love that feature. I don't want to spend a whole video, you know, 30 minutes of video watching something that I just need one technique for. So we tell you exactly where they are so you can jump around. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's exciting. So this is already on there. And let me tell you, this project set is selling like hotcakes. Yeah, we have absolutely. one with the embellishments and then we have one without the embellishments. So you can choose which one of those you like. And this church was actually a request from a viewer. Someone oh, had asked cool. us to yeah. make a church shape um, surface. So um, if you guys have requests, we're not going to say really? that we're going to be able to do all of them, yeah, but yeah. if you have requests, send them our way so that we can yeah. see if it's something that we can add to our stuff. Yeah, we're super interested in listening to what you guys want. We're so happy that you're here. We appreciate it. Every time that you spend time with us, um, order stencils. If you're ordering from us, we really, really, really appreciate um, that. I mean, it's like, this is what we do. And that is like the summary of everything that sure. we do. So it's yep. super awesome that you guys support us that way. Thank you. And Glennis said that she ordered this project yesterday. So Thank we can't you, wait to see when you. you post it, when you um, yeah, paint share. it, and then you're going to share it with yeah. us. Okay, so now let's really quick, before we get started, we're going to talk about giveaways. Ooh, we've got some good we stuff. We have some good stuff. So you see all these brushes here? We are giving these away today. We are going to randomly select someone who is commenting and on our live. And I have alarms set on my phone. Yep. So whenever the alarm goes off, we're going to pick someone. So we're actually going to start now. And the winner of this one is Jennifer Marino Wallace. Congratulations, so, Jennifer. Congratulations, Jennifer. It's you lucky have day, a half-inch dome brush coming your way. We will message you and get your address and send that out to you. And then our big grand prize. So our grand prize, we're not going to announce until the day after. Mm -hmm. Because we do want to give people who are working or who can't be live mm -hmm. the opportunity to still win yeah. something, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the way that this is going to work, this is $200 worth of Christmas stencils. Um, and it's assorted stencils that are very popular and we are going to anybody that is watching this afterwards or if you have to jump off and don't get a chance to like and share and comment um, then you can do that later on this evening or you know first thing in the morning or whatever and then tomorrow morning we're going to choose a random winner out of the people that have liked shared and commented and we're going to announce that on Facebook and you'll just need to pop over to Facebook and see who won and maybe it'll be your lucky day this is like more than 10 stencils and then we have a thought what if we sent this to the lucky winner in one of, oops, there went. <laughs> okay, so if you use j -hooks, This is why we hang on a second. Away so from <laughs> when we do these at our store, we use these J-hooks. So we have imported these from the, the shop and they will catch on every single stencil. They're really handy to just hook on a wire and that makes it so we can alphabetize. Works great in a shop setting where you have hundreds, maybe even a thousand stencils. 
However, they will catch things. Anyway, but these books are magic. And so we thought, what if we punched these stencils and sent them with the disc um, rings to um, our lucky winner? We want to hear what you guys think of that. Is that a good way to do that? Is that something that you'd be interested in? So we already have a great question, and I'm going to tell you, Tina, this question's from Tina, okay. and she asked, can you drop shadow with colors other than black, gray, and white? So you can drop, yes. Let's do something on that to show what it looks like. I um, think Not that we color. absolutely should, yeah. but one of my favorite colors to drop shadow with is teal. It yes. looks beautiful. So um, I'm going to put this away, and we are going to get started today. Um, we have a couple of things. We have... At the very, very end, this week I walked in here, picked up something off of this table, and um, when I picked it up, it was very startling, and it was from last week's lesson, and I'm gonna share what that was. It like blew our hippie noodle. We had every one of us jaw dropped. <laughs> every one of us had the gasp, and we were so surprised, and it was just like really mind-blowing. So um, we're gonna share that at the end, so stay tuned. Stick around, and plus you wanna get a chance to win those brushes. And um, today's lesson is going to be yeah, so this from a customer. From a customer. So last week, Bonnie asked, do you ever bother with painting in your bridges? So we decided, you know what, we're going to do a whole thing on that. Yeah. That's um, one of the things that we did with the questions last week is we answered what we could answer quickly. And then we kind of skimmed some out to do whole lives on that had a little bit more meat to them and a little bit more explaining was needed. And this was one of them. So thank you so much for your question. Um, I used to always paint in the bridging on my stencils. And um, then when we started making our stencils, we um, stopped doing that after about a year. And the reason is, is we got really good at bridging things. And so the bridges were pretty. And so I'm gonna show you some examples of what, when you would wanna fill in your bridges and when you would not. Um, we started as a design company. We did not um, start as a stencil company. So we were making things pretty before we were making stencils to make art, if that makes sense. They're kind of the same thing, but it really influenced how we bridge. So I'm going to bring this stencil, this um, design over here. And this has got an example. I don't know if you've ever seen like, you can always tell a company that is making stencils that doesn't use their end product because They'll take a stencil and then just run like a bridge just right through the middle of the letters and it's never quite following the lines and all of that kind of thing. In a case like this, this is done in a really blocky way so I think it's actually quite whimsical. I probably wouldn't do this one but it's kind of an example of that kind of bridging and that's when I would probably go ahead and fill it in. And then uh, fun backstory, my son used to edit videos for me and I used to always fill in my bridging. And he came to me and said, Mom, you know, why aren't you filling in your bridging anymore? And I was like, I don't know. And I, you know, kind of like think, think, think for a minute and look at what I'm doing. And then it, it occurred to me, if you look at like here on this S, that bridging is done with the curve of the letter. So it's really pretty and it's elegant and it flows. The V follows along the curve of the line. Everything is done with the shape of the letter being considered. So it's really thoughtful bridging. And that's why we don't usually fill it in because it's not very distracting. Um, so that I would not ever fill this bridging in ever, 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 because I think I can't even almost look at it and see the bridges. So that's a reason to not uh, fill them in. But now we're going to go fast forward and we're going to go to a bigger project. Okay. I love the mixed media multimedia of this, where we've taken, we painted the design and then We've added a piece with it. If this was not a Christmas one, you could do a seasonal wreath and pull it, you know, put a spring one, a summer one, and all of that stuff in its place. So um, anyway, I'm gonna take this away and show you a couple things about this. This is, I just put a screw right in the middle of that. And sound effects are free today, guys. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead. Do you have um, a question? No, I do have a question. Um, one of our questions is, I, I'm using my brushes so much that I'm wearing them out. How long do they usually last? <sighs> if you use your brushes so long um, that you're wearing them out, then you're doing exactly what you should do to those brushes. Um, you might be being too aggressive when you're washing them. Um, watch um, some of our teachers at our retail shop. Um, We'll take their brush on. This is like a really good example. It's really flat on top. I don't like them when they get flat. I scrub mine this way going around on the ginger grater. 
Um, a lot of our teachers are just like, you know, they really, sound effects are totally free today. <laughs> Um, you know, so they go right across that and that'll wear them down. Um, I will say, um, like I've been using these brushes for a really long time. Um, I've never really worn them completely out, but um, I have a lot of brushes. So it's like when you have a lot of shoes, you don't wear any one pair out kind of thing. So I don't know that I have a good answer for that. Well, I have a question. Yeah. This, is, this is a question from Carrie. Carrie's um, oh, Carrie, thank you for coming today and asking anytime. your questions. I'll be here every Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, Me too. <laughs> If you stipple versus swirl mm. more often, yeah. does that is that going to so. change the brush? I don't okay. think so. Yeah, they're um, they're pretty stiff bristles. They are natural bristles, um, so you know they, they're going to be more prone as like your hair. You know, they're some sort of um, natural. I don't know which kind it is, but um, so they might be more prone to breakage or whatever. But they're really they last a really really good darn long time. Like I've never noticed them not. And so I would say if I was estimating this in a retail classroom setting where we have, you know, 50 people at a time coming through, um, I would expect this to last six, eight months. Um, and then I would chuck it and go over, but that's a lot of usage. So that's what I would expect. And I'm the one that approves the orders. So, <laughs> so I have a, a good feeling for how many brushes we use. Back to this project here. I want to say that this is a really interesting, I want you to watch this. Um, this looks like it's a slatted board, but it's not at all. And I really think we need to do a project yes, on I something agree. like that that does a that fake too. slat. Um, so we're suggesting our own projects. Please suggest projects for us. Um, we want to know what you guys want to know, not just what we want to know. But I think that that's really an interesting thing. We did a distressed look. Then we used our banding stencil to um, go ahead and then make these bands and lines going straight across. And you could also use tape, and I'm gonna show you about tape in a second. But um, just a really good look, and you could do it in a, in a dark, and you could drop shadow that by just, you know, putting your skinny band on there and give it a drop shadow. That would give it a shaded effect and make it look even more like it was carved into the piece. So that's a really fun way of doing that. This is an example of something that I would go ahead and patch the bridging on. And as a matter of fact, we went out to one of our local festivals. Mm -hmm. A customer of ours um, uses this stencil and it's one of our best sellers. Um, she uses this stencil, she had it in her um, booth and she was like, this area right here, so that's why we chose this one. This area right here is, I, ha I can't do it. I can't get that um, patched, I can't patch the bridging. But the reason you do that on here is look over here on this Y, look how thick. The bigger your stencil gets, the more your stencil lines grow. And that's for stability. So in order to keep it from being super floppy, you have to stabilize it and you need bridging to stabilize. So that's why I'm gonna show you right now how I would take care of bridging this. So you could do two pieces of tape. Anytime that you use tape, um, you're basically making a temporary stencil. Okay, so I'm gonna, ooh, glasses. And again, I can actually see that. I don't know why I think I need my glasses to see big stuff, but I do. So you just put your tape on that side, put your tape on that side, and then you take your brush and you could, this is very dark and filled in, take it and stipple it. That's a temporary stencil. Then you peel that off, okay? Now, in the case of over here, we can't do that, but I want to show you one more way that you can take care of this. While you're doing that, I'm going to answer Diana's question yeah. really quick. Diana asked, do you use soap or cleaner for the brushes? I'm going to share with you, Diana, and I'm going to put it in the comments below, a how to clean your dirty brushes video that we have on YouTube. Yep, and we are, um, we did a how to clean your stencils um, just recently. And I want you to see, these are the multi-maskers. Um, these are shaped in a whole bunch of weird ways and it's an onboard tool. There's a ruler, um, uh, check marks and polka dots um, and it can mask around curves and corners. We discovered today, just like two <laughs> hours ago and we all went <gasps> like this. We've had just quite an epiphany kind of morning um, that if you put, you know how when we're talking about taping things down, you always put two pieces of tape if you put one piece of tape, then you can move things, right? So that'll move. If you put two pieces of tape, then you have, let me get that lifted. I always cut my nails short, so I don't have nails. So if you put two pieces, you can't move that. So that's super cool. But you can take two multi-maskers and your glasses and 
You can go side by side, Chirp. secure it, and then you can go back to your brush and da 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 da, ta da, and it doesn't move. It's so great. Now, we're going to come over here to this J, and I'm going to show you what I would do there. So, first, I would take, I can get a really good curve right around um, this guy. This to me looks like um, the nose of a cartoon character and he's guffawing and laughing and stuff. So you're going to take that nose and you're going to tuck that right on in there. And then you're going to push down your tape. And then what do we do about this? There's a couple of curves on here that will do like a good curve that I like. I had it earlier, but that's not what I'm going to do. I remembered the magical stretchy tape. So this is, all of these are stretchy tapes. They all stretch and they all bend, but the skinnier it is, the better it stretches and turns. If I pull off way too much stretchy tape, um, put that aside, and then I just put it on the line right where I'm gonna want it, and then I just guide it to my curve. Now I have a perfectly taped line, and you can actually take the stretchy tape and I'm gonna do just a sloppy one, um, just for a quick showing. But you can tape like a circle. Okay, so you can keep, the, keep that thing going all the way around, press it down with your thumbnail. You could do whatever you needed to to mask that. So that is, and see how it's all stretched out? Isn't that a magic? So that's a, this is what I, I have things that I call like toolbox tools. This is a toolbox tool. You want this in your toolbox to have it for when you um when you don't have it so now you have that taped and you're going to go over here and you're just going to stipple remove your tape and remove your stencil oh hey guys my alarm just went off guess what time it is that means it is time for another giveaway so we are going to give this one half inch dome brush to Teresa Miner. Teresa just asked congratulations. a question. Congratulations. We'll look at that and yeah. Congratulations, Teresa. Thank you for being here. Guys, let us know in the chats and stuff where you're from and like what the weather's doing and all that stuff. I think it's super fun. Um, if you are in love with our dome brushes, let other people know that too. That's what the lives are for is to communicate with other people. Like I tried that, I love it, and you can't wait, you know, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you let us know. Okay. This is an example of one that I probably would not ever go ahead and fi um, fill in the bridging. And the reason for that is, is there's like a hundred words. Um, this is a really cool set. We've got storage back here for the other two pieces. This comes in, does it come in a complete set, Carrie? It does. It okay. comes in a set of the three set, the three word stencils, and then there's also a knife, a fork, and a spoon. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, and we've got that. Um, and you can get it just the six stencils, or you can get it with the individual surfaces sets as well. Yeah. The surfaces as well. Okay, so cool. So we have a whole kit for that. So, one, you know, you've got your fork shape, and you've got your spoon, and you've got your knife, and this is just spoon shape. Okay, so there's a lot of words. The reason I probably really wouldn't do that is I did this in a dusty way. And so let me see if I can get you in closer here. Um, if you notice here on this T, this T is a dark kind of medium gray. And then this S right next door, the S is super faded and super like faint. And it's not, they're not the same color. They're the same color I use that to paint with, but they're not the same looking color. So if I needed to bridge this, what I would do is I would go find myself something like a hammered iron gray instead of like a middle value gray. And that way it would bridge or fill in the bridges nicer, nicer nicelier. <laughs> we'll make up words today. Okay, and then what I wanna show you though is how to bridge, and I wanna show you a round brush, okay? so. This is something that I'm super passionate about is paintbrushes. Well, yeah. somebody once told me that you, um, you don't need another paintbrush, Patty. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> we are no longer friends. Yeah, we are no longer, I'm not no talking to you anymore. Um, but yeah, there's no such thing as <laughs> too many brushes. Um, a good round brush, this is the second best round brush that I have ever owned. 
and the first best round brush that I've ever owned. The company went out of business. I even tried to buy the company and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. They were from Japan and it just didn't work out. So um, like this is the second best, but it is a really, really good second best. So I wanna show you about a round brush and how you use a round brush to do this. You can do it with your stencil. I could bring my stencil on here, is it in my book? I think it is. Okay, so I could bring my stencil on here. And did you see how that just whipped right out of there? That is the coolest thing. And when you put it back, I know we're talking about round brushes. Get back on it. Um, you just punch it right on in there and it puts it right back in and you can just, it supports the whole thing. Um, unless you have J hooks, um, they stack really nicely too. But I could go right through my stencil. No, I could not. I'm being a very silly person right now. Um, if I wanted to do a second coat, I could do it through there, but your stencil has the bridging. That was very silly of me. <laughs> Okay. I think we need another drink. I think we need a drink. Hello. Hmm. <laughs> Just gonna sit here for a second. And I think the, um, the humor of that is pretty fun. Okay, so I'm gonna show you about a round brush. The anatomy of a round brush is similar to the anatomy of a dome brush. It is shaped to a point all the way up. This is just a very dull rounded point. This is shaped to a pointy point. Um, the round brush um, at trade shows and stuff that I've gone to for years, um, all of the people that showed the round brushes were always the men that own the companies. They have giant hands, they're great big tall guys, and their round brushes were always like an inch long, inch and a half long, and then they would show you this fancy stuff that you could do with it, and you'd take it home, and you couldn't do it, because when a round brush is doing what round brushes do, you need to be able to plunge it down, so you have to have enough enough distance between here and the table or the project to be able to lift your project up to have control and move it around. If it's super long, you're gonna be dragging around. Okay, so that's why this is such a perfect round brush and it just comes back to a tip and a, it's just really good. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about round brushes because I think it's super important. Um, you gotta have posture if you're doing a round brush. So let me get some paint out. Comment yeah, real quick. Here. Mindy just commented and said that she uses her stencil brushes when she is shadowing her not stencil projects as well. So she's kind of using the oh, brushes yeah. that she got for stenciling to go to other. Yeah, things. I use. So I have only been a stenciler, um, like a an avid stenciler for maybe six years. I've been painting for thirty five years. Been teaching for thirty three. Um, taught all around the country and stuff like that. So. For 20, so hang on, math, uh, 27, 27 years I didn't stencil. Um, I went through the whole, um, there was a theorem era that um, was while I was painting and it never influenced me. I never ever used stencils. And, um, and then the, the stencils, I'm gonna tell you what, this is worth talking about for a hot second. The stencils that started this whole thing, huh, this is a really, 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 really good example are things like this. When you want, and there was a whole, um, you know, 1990s um, checkerboard is trim trend. And if you want to base coat a bunch of checks, you are gonna be there for a month of Sundays. I can get my checkerboard trim done in 20 seconds. If I did it by hand, I'd be probably two hours. And then I'd be mad because they weren't even and I'd be using tape to make the band straight. I'd be measuring, which I really don't like to do. So it's important. And then th little things like this, like this is these, you, it's hard to tell because there's paint all over it, but they're little bats. Anything with points, these are the things that you really, really, really want. You know, perfectly circled um, polka dots, patterns of polka dots, anything, little music notes. Oh my God, shoot me now. You know, so yeah, chicken wire, really good example. So anything that's a repeat pattern is what started me because like it's just so painful. And then people, I love lettering. I've been in love with lettering forever. People are so nervous about doing their lettering by hand. Um, it, it just freaks them out. So we totally started with lettering and these little details and then went and Bob's your uncle and we've been at it for years now. Now we have 6,000 titles, isn't that ridiculous? 
It's kind of great ridiculous bin. And we have them for every season and every event. So, all right, so I've got a piece of regular um, cardstock. I'm gonna show you about posture. Okay, with your round brush um, and liner brushes, they both work that way. You have to have your handle straight up and down if you wanna use it as a round or a liner. So you're always gonna keep it straight up. If you lean like you're writing with a pencil, then you're gonna be sad. So, and then you check the um, consistency of your paint. You wanna thin it. So I just grabbed some water with my brush, dropped it down there, and I'm just gonna mix that into a creamy, cream-like consistency. And then I always like to draw, dry off the handle of my brush because um, it's hard to handle it, like a wet knife, wet brush. Okay, let me show you how much posture is important. A little bit more water. Consistency is very important. If you can't make the paint move, it's because you probably don't have it thin enough to flow. You have any more questions? Yes, I was just answering yeah. one. I typed it out, but I also wanted to answer it out loud. Um, Jarita said, I haven't been cleaning my stencils lately. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. And we have a video coming out on that um, really soon. No, there's a video out now. Um, not, no, not yet. Not, not yet. Okay, but it's coming. It's coming soon. It's coming soon to a theater on YouTube, <laughs> on our channel near you. But speaking of YouTube, this weekend we do mm. have um, Saturday morning at I think It's like Saturday morning cartoons, it but it's stencils, it's right? It's Saturday Stencil cartoons fans. for you guys. Yeah. Um, we are releasing a new stencil basics tutorial awesome. that I'm going to walk you through all the basics of stenciling. The question that we get all the time still is how do I stencil without bleeding under? So we're going to show you how to do that. Yeah, we're going to show you the basics. And in your basics, you're just going to find refined things so even if you already know what you're doing check it out anyway she's gonna have some great tips for that okay so we've got our right consistency I'll re-wet it a little since we were talking and then I twirl off a little bit excess water watch what happens when my paintbrush is straight up and down okay I can drop my glasses okay and I can go and 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 I can keep going and I can keep going and it's where you're seeing the missing is where I'm not pressing evenly because I'm trying to go fast. And then that would keep going. But watch what happens when I do it with out good posture. Okay, so that's a lot of length of lines. Okay, so if I just put this down and grab it and go, I get only that far and I'm already out of ink. And then look how fat my line is. I could do it thinner, but that is when you put the posture down, that is what happens is you... You get a clunky line. Um, you don't get the perfectly pinpoint thing that you want. And so that's how you control your round brush. And I think that, I'm gonna keep that out here. I might need that again. All right, so we'll come over here and we're gonna talk about how to do these bridging. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing two colors from the Magic Color Drawer. These are um, honey bottles. And don't forget to like, share, and comment. Um, these are acrylic paint and um, we just buy it in bulk and then put it in smaller bottles so that we can um, not be lifting and hefting and storing. Can you imagine like giant gallon size bottles <laughs> on the back wall or in our drawer be like, ugh. Um, and I just shared a link to our Amazon links. We have a blog. The affiliate, yeah. Every time that we add something new, so our honey, mm. our honey pots, our ginger grater, all of the things that we love to use but we don't carry on our website, mm -hmm. you can find them on that blog post. So pin that page, add it to your favorites, yeah. and then we can you can get to it at any time. And it'll be pinned in every one of these yes. lives anyway. So Okay, so I'm going to take just a little mix. Um, the other, I, I talked about the fade, and that's one of the reasons I would not do it. And this has got some scratches and fades in here. I'm gonna pull out without water a little bit of the color I think it'll be most like, and then brush mix just a little. I'm just doing just a little brushy brush, no water added on this. And then with my handle straight up and down, I'm just gonna gently follow that line, okay? See if I kinda nailed that color a little bit. It might take two little coats We'll pull out a little bit more. Okay, and see that's a little teeny bit lighter. Okay, so I'll go that way. I'm gonna take care of that in just a second with a sander, and that should knock it back. This is especially gonna, I almost think that this looks like it's, um, so this is a neat thing to do. 
is just go in the direction go in the direction of the sanding marks to fill that in okay and Kat just commented about a cleaning tip as she uses hand sanitizer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's very bright. Okay, so see they're disappearing. Um, sometimes people have, sometimes people think that stenciling is cheating. And so it's super not cheating, but some people feel like if people knew they used a stencil, then they're not really an artist or not really somebody that knows what they're doing. So they try to fill it in to make it not look that way perfectly fine to make that happen but um, just so that you know like it's not cheating nope. you know <laughs> it's perfectly legal and um, that color Amelia said why does your paint seem to go further with stenciling than mine if I add more paint I'm nervous of bleeding um, yeah you should be um, so you think that okay so say it again that um, why does your paint seem to go further with stenciling than mine if I add more paint I'm nervous I would say probably pressure is Amelia. Yeah, yeah. Amelia. Amelia. I think it's probably the pressure that you're using. You're probably pushing a little bit harder um, than I am. I, I'm a very loud, um, energetic person. I'm using all these words very lightly <laughs> because it's very true. Okay, um, but when I, I have good control of my um, pressure, but I've been doing this a really long time. Um, but when I'm Painting with a swirl, I'm literally not bending those bristles at all. If I was doing it heavier, you would see like the hula dance. You know, you'd see that whole thing moving like that. So when I'm doing it, you're not seeing anything. And then as I continue, I go a little heavier and a little heavier and a little heavier. And then as soon as I start pushing and it's doing the hula, I pick up a little bit more and go again. Light coats will do a much better job of of covering if you layer light coats than like a couple of heavy coats and then you'll use up a lot more paint. I think that's probably the case if I'm imagining my, you know, people that I taught to paint. Oh, oh guess it's what time, time it is. for a giveaway. And the winner of another one half inch brush is Cat McDonald. Congratulations, Cat. We'll message you, Cat, and we will get your address and we will get your um, brush sent out. And speaking of giveaways and sending things out, did you guys see my picture that I posted last week of all of our giveaway things? Oh last my gosh, week, there's so many. We had to so use our ways. biggest surface in the building. Yeah. <laughs> Big <laughs> giant sheets of wood. Big giant sheets of wood. Um, we have more than 50 stencils that are going out to people who asked questions last yeah. week. So we're in the process of getting those out. I'm taking them very slowly over to our shipping department. Yeah. At, nine or ten at a time so they're getting out this week <laughs> yeah the rest of them will go yeah they've been started but we're gonna finish them that was a big event we were so super, super excited um about the format change we oh, just yeah. really wanted to honor you know you guys stencil fans out there um with your questions and your tips you know oh, yeah. about like how do i clean this um mm -hmm. using the hand sanitizer um is absolutely a great way to clean a, a stencil I don't know. I would be careful in my brushes. I would make sure that I was really rinsing it out if I used it in my brush, but you could use it in your brush as well. Just make sure you rinse. Okay, so I got out a little bit browner color over here because these are dark letters down here at the bottom. And then I'm just going to tickle. You notice that I was laying down and then I picked my brush back up. Even I will do that. I'll default to pencil. My, I do Bible journaling and all kinds of journaling and stuff like that. And I do a lot of like that um, handwriting and not not like nice handwriting just like my handwriting but I write out things quite a bit all the time so natural stance for me is to lean back on that and I had to remind myself just then so then I'm going with the direction of the sanding our friend Denise Van Newkirk hey Denise she reminds us she's in Clive Alberta Canada oh, and gosh. she wanted to remind us that the snow is coming oh no <laughs> Denise I'm so sorry Denise Patty and I were talking this morning about when I woke up this morning it was 63 degrees in our house so it's good it's about time to turn on the heat here unfortunately yeah. <laughs> yeah. the house uh, and then I woke up this morning and I was like it's gloriously <laughs> cool <laughs> it's like it's 63 degrees Yes, Yay. I was having a party. <laughs> so my husband is my opposite and he's all about warm and I'm all about cool and we just have that. So this is the perfect zone right now. <laughs> that and spring, right? Yeah. I got two perfect seasons. Okay, so you see that that did a pretty good job. I do have a little bit of light 
showing in a couple areas. Let me show you what a little sanding will do. And I'm just gonna, am I dry? I think I'm dry. Yeah. Okay, while we're sanding, um, let me find it. Glennis asked last week about sanding. Yeah. Um, she said that she's been having some problems. This is a with, good question. With stencil lettering looking right. And she asked what she was doing wrong. So Patty and I had been talking about this and we think we, mm -hmm. we might have got it. I think I'm about to trash a project and show you guys some stuff, okay? Guys, I'm really sad about this. The, this is so pretty, yeah. It's such a good, but uh, it's gonna be okay. It'll be okay. So um, fix it. I'm not gonna show you all the way to fix it because I don't wanna keep this as like 12 projects going on in a row. Okay, so who was our, our question? Glennis. Glennis, Glennis, thank you for your question. I really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm gonna go on this side. Now this whole thing has been sanded um, and through the lettering and everything. and. And actually, Rusty, if you can come right over here and get a close-up on this, um, you can see it from up above as well. Um, this is just super drugged through those letters, and it's really irregular. This row does not have anything going on. Um, it's okay, Glennis, to be having like this randomness. It really, in my opinion, uh, it'd be great if you could send a picture, but in my opinion, it adds uh, aged. Aging doesn't ever happen the same on every person. It doesn't happen. One car that's a vintage car doesn't look as old as another vintage car. You know, it depends on what it's been through. It depends on a lot of things, the colors you use. So um, don't distress evenly because then it won't look distressed. But if I go through and ruin this, wrong one. Oh, that's thank goodness. <laughs> that means you're not supposed to do it. No. <laughs> okay, so this is the smooth um, sandpaper. This is 150? Yes. 150 grit. And then this is the 60 grit. And then, by the way, this has not been loaded correctly. Um, be careful that you load these nice and tight. Um, I'm not gonna show you that. I think there's a video we can link to. Um, for I think we have a Facebook I think, video. I'll look for yeah, it. Okay. I'll look for it and reshare it. Yeah, this, it, when it does that, it doesn't do as good a job of sanding. Okay, so I'm gonna actually kill this side. Okay, so if I go through too much, Okay, so that took out like really like almost all the detail except for up here on Mr. Bright Guy. Take him down a notch. Okay. Wow, no, I just ruined my project. I'm very sad, right? So um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your stencil back. I call paint the great eraser. And so if it did too much in your background, you could take your black paint and you could just go right back over it and then if you needed to fix it, you line that stencil up, take your two pieces of tape, always two pieces, and like I said about um, the, the, um, these guys, the multi-maskers, you can tape over a hole and secure things. Like I can't do this taping to my edge because um, I'm edge to edge, but that will secure that. You can take your gray color, and I'm not sure which gray it was. I'm looking for, yeah. I don't know. I don't know either, yeah. Let me find a gray. Take our gray, and put some of that out there. I can go right over the top, and I can re-swirl, and I'm gonna do just half of this and show you if I don't want to repair my background. And then how many of you are peekers, right? So now it's fixed. Ta-da! So it's absolutely, these are all gone and this is all fixed. And it's even kind of in the same family. If I needed to, this is slightly brighter. So what I would do if I had it slightly brighter is I'd take my sanding disc. If it's cold, it's wet. I always do a field test and give it just a little bit. And I'm sanding the same way I was talking about painting with those dome brushes. When I'm sanding, I'm not trying to like take the skin off of my hand. I'm like letting the weight, this thing has got weight to it, this um, sanding block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sanding block has got weight. And so it naturally does something. So I'm only pushing when I want um, distress, distress. But if I'm going through my letters just to knock them back, I just let the weight of this do it and I just guide it. Okay, so that answers that question, I think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I call these um, paint brushes and paint colors because if I 
go through the lettering really hard. It changes its color and it changes its texture. So it's both a paintbrush and a distressing tool and stuff like that. So um, these are very valuable. You want one in each of your grits so that you have it handy and it just makes such a difference. All right, I think we might be. Yep, I'll have a couple questions. Okay, let's get a couple questions. So, Patricia. Yes. Patricia, Patricia. Patri Hi, Patricia. Patricia wants to know from Patricia, do mm -hmm. you go to any conventions? Um, not anymore. Um, they've really um, gotten sparse. We've had COVID for two years. Um, I was delighted for some of the people that um, stopped having conventions that they did it before COVID happened because that would have been tragic. Um, but yeah, no, we are um, we are very happy staying still. Um, I've got a garden and chickens. Yeah, you also did the convention circuit. For I did a it for a long, long time. time. Yeah, twenty years, I think. Um, the kids got grown and they quit carrying my stuff, <laughs> <laughs> so I had to stop. Um, you know, child labor and all that. Uh, but no, and now you know we have a retail shop here, Gala Police, um, as well, and so we're we have our. And then we're, you know, we're in all of the yeah. online marketplaces um, and stuff like that. So I'm staying pretty busy. I think I'm going to stay home. Okay, I have one more question, okay. and I'm going to ask this question. We have we have so many questions I haven't got to today. So well, I want to let you know that for those of you asking questions, if we don't answer them on here live, we yeah. do go through and answer each every, individual every question. Yeah. Last week, Patty and I sat for I think 45 minutes yeah. on the phone and went question by question mm -hmm. and answered them. But Tina had a really good question, and Tina asked. If you are lettering using mm -hmm. individual letters, how do you space your letters and keep them even? We have something coming on this. We have, <laughs> we have the perfect, we have a tool for that. Yep. Um, one of the things that we've done really well in this company, um, because it's a company run by somebody who's painted for 35 years and like painted like aggressively, like I literally like have, I don't know, seven or 800 projects that I've published and you know, and then plus, I don't know how many, have thousands of boards that I've based and brushed and stenciled on since we opened the retail shop um, and then started the online thing. It's like crazy. Anyway, um, the question was, um, how do you do, oh, spacing. Spacing, yeah. Tools. I mean, I got dice. I, <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't remember. Sure. I went the other direction. These tools. So, um, you know, I, I was standing there and I'm like, oh my God, I hate taping. And um, we came out with these fabulous little gnome stencils. They're so cute, but they need all of this like blocking and stuff like that. So we came out with the multi-maskers so we wouldn't have to tape everything. Um, we came out with this because banding and taping banding is a pain and it peels and it makes ragged edges. And we came out with a lettering spacing tool yes. coming soon to a theater near you. Yes. Yeah, so we're so excited about that. And we just actually, you could look, look online. Um, I'm not sure which category they'd be in, but um, we have, I think, 20 new alphabets. Yeah, I can share a link that, that. Um, that we have published um, just really recently. It was one of those things that we, because we do so much lettering all together, we didn't think about alphabets. And so we finally came out with alphabets. So um, yeah, that's, that that tool is coming very soon, and it's it will replace all the measuring and crooked lines, and, and we're gonna have videos on it and all the things. So you're gonna you're gonna love it. Yeah. All right. So guys, um, don't our forget surprise. to our surprise from oh our surprise. Oh, our surprise. Oh, thank, thank, thank you, Steve. Steve. While we're talking about Steve, you are <laughs> said we're Save just the day. totally you know distracted. Save the day. Um, we are going to. Um, do our huge giveaway that's going to be announced tomorrow so make sure that you like comment and share so that you can be entered to win yeah. 10 plus 200 dollars yeah. worth of Christmas stencils that's for anyone who's on here now watches the replay yeah. we will announce it tomorrow afternoon I think we decided we're gonna give 24 hours so it'll be probably tomorrow around 1 yeah. so make sure you watch and get in your like comment and share yeah. before them yeah and then do they get more chances the more they like share and comment is that how that works um, or is it just like it's just do it once and yeah. it's good yeah okay all right I walked in here to the studio this at this morning and um, we were getting ready pulling things out pulling our story together and all of that and here on the table lies last week's varnish roller now if you didn't see last week's live you can go into Facebook and go see that um, I looked at that and like I had just like last week in the video took it taken a head off of there that somebody didn't clean correctly <laughs> and then it dried on the thing and then it wouldn't roll and I was just like <sighs> I hate buying things that I don't have to throw away I hate throwing things away that I have to throw away anyway I picked it up and I went 
oh my god i'm like carrie feel and i went thing. oh my god i know and it's cold and if it's if it's wet if it's cold it's wet and i was like wait a minute that worked even better i didn't know how long it would keep so i pulled this out i flipped the board over and this was just a little sample thing we were experimenting so i did just this and look at it's varnishing it's still varnishing it's still varnishing with later. last year's well, last last year's last week's varnish so that varnish is still good and it is doing its job and this little plastic sandwich bag did the perfect thing so you just roll it up um varnish um oxidizes and that's how it dries it oxi oxidizes with air so does paint and so that keeps the air out which kept the brush or the roller good and so that is just a totally blew our happy noodle we Absolutely. all were like oh, wow you know so i hope that you enjoy that because that is a magical way to extend not washing your things you can do that with paint the same way so isn't that fun very cool i love it all right you guys thank you so much we will see you next week we have excellent plans for next week yes. i cannot wait to share cheers cheers see have you. a great week see you next week